What is it actually like to hike to the Fagradalsfjall volcano? Is it dangerous? What should I pack? Is it difficult? How long does it take? Are these beautiful toes? Just like the ideal toe depends on your beauty standard. The answer to all these questions is, it depends. I have been there more times than I can count. Well, okay, I've been there three times. I can show you what it's like and even give you some recommendations. First, uh, first key advice would be to not overdress. Yeah. Because we are sweating a lot. Oh yeah. You might have heard stories about people getting lost, spraining their ankles, exhausting themselves, and yes, Faradalsfjall is Iceland's deadliest mountain in history. So, is it dangerous? There is many risks. You have to know a bit, like this kind of collapses and gases especially. Uh, because there are some gases that you don't feel, like CO2, you know. However, you can reduce the risk significantly by just knowing what you're getting yourself into and preparing properly. First of all, pick the right day. The number one authority to look to is the local police along with Almanavarnir. Every man's warning? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll link in the description below. Mild to moderate wind from the south, give or take maybe 90 degrees in each direction is ideal. Too much wind will increase the effort required to get back significantly. And not enough wind will choke you to death. And what should I pack? Well, this is everything that I packed for my trips. The important stuff is obviously your phone with the GPS and plenty of batteries. You want to bring plenty of water, food, extra bit of clothes, extra battery, headlamps and a bunch of camera gears you're not going to use. If there's snow, and I hope there's no more snow till maybe next winter, but if there is snow, you should have spikes on your shoes. But I do really recommend shoes that are good in the mud, wet or dry, doesn't matter. Just good muddy mud shoes and make sure they support your ankles because there's a lot of rocks on the way. Private lands have been turned into car parks here. There's plenty of space. This road is terrible. Drive it slowly, but I do recommend going all the way because that gives you, gets you closest to the starting point. And the starting point I am counting is here. So add the walk from the car park to here to the total distance you need to walk and multiply it by two unless you're not planning to come back. The walk to the volcano is about four kilometers. The first K used to be a difficult track through the lava fields only a couple of weeks ago until we dumped a bunch of gravel on the road through this dense residential elf village and that happened faster than any pothole has been fixed in the city in uh, uh, ever. Here the track splits into two, A and B. I've never been route B, but supposedly there is no steep hill on that route. Wait, hill? Steep hill? How steep? Well, it's it's very steep. Thank you. No. The third kilometer has 130 meters, 113 meter elevation, which is some distance in some fraction of a mile over some number of feet, I think. Some attempts have been made to make the hill more bearable. This beautiful old home of an elderly elf lady has been demolished just so we don't have to climb over some rocks. We made it! Here we go. Special effects. Yeah! I'll just edit a volcano in here. Somewhere. Super special effects. Wow! Okay, let's go home. You used to have to follow this not covered rope up this really steep incline, but now you have to just walk alongside the valley and then you have to take the incline. 
it's still difficult and now it even takes longer. If you make it up the hill, you will start to see the volcano very soon. And this will cause you to lose track of time, distance covered and probably your partner. Resulting in a messy argument which will eventually lead to the talk about your in regard to his or her feelings. But just look at the view. I forgot to film in 4K so it just looks like a match in the distance. From here. The walk becomes quite long, but it's exciting. You start to see the lava fields, you stop and listen to the sound it makes. I couldn't be bothered to record the audio, so sorry about that, but it's really interesting. You might even come across an old airplane wreckage. A plane has crashed here, here and here. I found some uh, wreckage here. This is what makes this Iceland's deadliest mountain. I will include a link to a very interesting video about these crashes in the description. When you stop and start to admire the marvel before you, it is easy to get cold. Go warm up by the volcano, but not too close. There are potentially deadly gases hiding in the pockets surrounding the lava fields. So stay close to the orange-yellow type of guys that always seem overdressed. Those are the rescue teams and they are sort of the canaries in the coal mine if you like. They have gas meters with them and they can alert you if the oxygen level drops. Also. If you tell them you have a boo-boo, they will drive you home on a quad bike. Now how cool is that? They might even give you a helicopter ride for free. But seriously, don't do that. The scene is much more beautiful and dark. So wait. Go to your pa backpack, look for your lunch, realize you forgot it in the car in all the excitement of getting started, get over it, think about the fact that you have to walk all the way back hungry and in the dark, and enjoy the show. And on your way back, Put on your headlamp. Navigating the rocky, narrow paths is harder and more time consuming than you realize. Well, the hardest part of the whole journey is the last kilometer, when you can almost see the car. Your back will start to get heavier with every step you take, and you start to question what you're doing in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, and you have an important meeting in five hours. But hey, have fun, stay safe.